playing. Nobody really wants to go out, so here you go. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you look really good in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated a moment. We are happy to be back in Abilene. Glad to see everybody here. Appreciative of what God has done in all our lives. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot of water passed on the bridge in a little while. Yes, we, sir. Uh, I tell you, life can take some turns that you don't expect. And you, you're going to have to be ready all the time because you never know what's coming. I'm going to ask my wife. I'm shocking her, surprising her. But I found out that at the spur of the moment, she does really good. Yes, sir. And I'm just going to ask her to just say a little word for the Lord. Amen. I love the Lord this morning. He's been so good to me. Yes, so yes, good yes. to be back here, be with Brother and Sister Driscoll. They are dear friends of ours. They're, like you said, there's been a lot of water under the bridge, but yes. these folks have been faithful. Yes. They've been through the ups and the downs, and they've always been faithful to God. They love God. They love His yes, people. Amen. And we're just happy to be here today. I love the Lord. He's been so good to me. Yes. I can never praise Him enough. I can never thank Him enough for His goodness. Amen. 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 All right. All right. All right. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise all the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. Praise you. My, my, my. I was looking at the weather this morning and got shot. It's going to be 105 here today and 108 on Thursday. At that time, it's going to be about 95 where I live. Oh, y'all can move over there if you want to. <laughs> no, no, my, my, my. It's been hot over there, but I, I was just shocked when I looked at that this morning and thought, this is May. This is this is too early for this. But then it's Texas and it's summer, so there you go. Amen. Let's stand again. We're going to go to the word of the Lord. The Lord has been talking to me about this scripture and I'm going to share a little story with you when we get into this a little bit further. I'm a very simple guy and God has to talk to me on a very simple level. Me too. Uh, I'm glad I've got friends that are very highly educated and they can understand mysteries, but I don't do good with mysteries. So I have to ask the Lord now, what did you just say and what did it just mean? Right, but, exactly. But I read these scriptures today, and it doesn't take a whole lot of education to understand the scriptures I'm going to read in Psalms, the 50th chapter. Psalms 50. It's a beautiful day to us. Yes, sir. We all, as we grow older, we have health things that come along. Nobody's right. exempt right. from any of that. And I, I don't think you never live long enough or get old enough to be exempt. Right. From the devil wanting to destroy your life. I, I don't think you can get too old to be exempt from sin. Right. Right. And so from the day we start serving God to the day we finish, and God chooses the day we finish, right. you got to be on your toes. Right. you got to be aware. You can't just be unaware of what's going on around right. you. You need to watch things that are going on around you. Yes, sir. Let me read in the writings of David. The book of Psalms is one of my favorite yes. of the whole Bible. David is one of my favorite characters. I know David made a mistake, but God forgave him yes, and restored him. Yes, and he said of David, he's a man after my own heart. But in Psalms 50, I read a scripture that's in verse 14 that said, Offer unto God thanksgiving. And pay thy vows unto the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. All right. And then in Psalms 86. David again is writing. And he said in verse 7. In the day of my trouble. Yeah. I will call upon thee. For thou wilt answer me. All right. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. Amen. We're going to talk to you a little bit today on this thought. What will you do in the day of trouble? All right. 
What will you do in the day of trouble? Lord bless you today. You can be seated. And as a little boy that we used to pastor after he we'd been there a little while, Brother Joe, when we were in Wharton, had a little boy named Bobby there, and Bobby was four or five years old. I don't know just what he was then, but he's a grown man now with children. Been a long time ago, but Bobby learned my ways, and when I would pull my coat off, he would look up Brother West at his bottom and say, well, he's going to preach now. <laughs> he, he's through fooling around just talking. He's going to preach that. He learned. Praise yes, God. Sir. Yes, sir. Now, one of the things little Bobby learned, he learned some other things too. He had the day of trouble very regular because little Bobby couldn't be still or quiet either. <laughs> he come to me one time and he said, Twitcher, uh, you know you do really good when I don't go to sleep. <laughs> the whole time I was there, I never did good. <laughs> little Bobby slept every service. His mama would be kicking dust out of the carpet, just shouting, and, and Bobby would be up on there snoring away. And I thought, I hope he don't roll over. <laughs> it's going to be a real day of trouble if he rolls over. Yes, sir. Yeah. One day, he he would get cutting up, carrying on. She'd, she'd talk to him two or three times, and then she would grab Bobby and throw him over her shoulder and out the door she would go and you could hear her administering some learning to little Bobby in the foyer. He'd wail like she was tearing his arm off. <laughs> Come back in, he wouldn't be there 10 minutes, he'd be doing it again. And one day she picked little Bobby up and throwed him over her shoulder and headed out the door and just before he went through the swinging doors between the sanctuary and the foyer, he looked up and said, Pway, say, pway. <laughs> and she didn't meet him that day. <laughs> Little Bobby had learned to call on the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. That's something we need to learn. Amen. When I read the words of David here in Psalms 50 and in Psalms 86, David said, In the day of my trouble, I call on the Lord. Yes. Brother Andy, David was quite a fella. Yeah, he was. I don't know how big he was. I don't know that he was any bigger than anybody else. Saul was the first king yes, and David's father-in-law. Bible said he was head and shoulders taller than everybody around him. Yes, yes, and when he was small in his own sight, God blessed him exceedingly. Yeah. It was only when Saul got too big for his britches, so to speak, yeah, and got to thinking he could make choices of his own that God didn't need to make, that he got in trouble with God. But David, regardless of what size he was, God himself said, you're a man of war. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. The old saying, he'd fight at the drop of a hat, and he'd drop it if you wanted him to. Yeah. Yeah. He was ready to go anytime, sis. Right. He had learned to use a sling and throw a rock so accurately yeah. that David could do incredible things with that sling that he had. Right, right. He had learned to trust it, but he learned something more than that, Brother Joe. He learned about the name of the Lord. Yeah. He told that giant, he said, you come to me with swords and spears, but I come in the name of the Lord. Yeah. All right. He didn't say anything about that sling. He said, I come in the name of the Lord. Name of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. But David, David had a mindset. I, I don't know if it was so much the size of David as it was the mentality of David. Because I, I'm just going to tell you, he was out tending the sheep one day when he's just a boy. He's not even a grown man yet. Right. And the Bible said a bear came right. and would have consumed some of those lambs or maybe even the big sheep. And I don't, I don't mind telling you, I would have probably headed for high ground. Yes, sir. Especially since David didn't have a 30 off 6 or a 308. Amen. Or anything else. He had a sling and a stone. But since he killed that bear... Basically with his bare hands. Yes, sir. Now I gotta tip my hat to him just for having the, the courage to stand. Yes, sir. And not run. Most folks would have run. Yes, sir. 
Yeah. I think that's maybe one of the reasons God wanted David to be king because David would stand. Right here. Right. right. Trouble comes, David's not running off. You know where David's going to be. Right. If you got somebody that's the old saying, got your six, he's got you back. You, go. you want to make sure he's going to be there when you look back. Yep. Right. And you want to be there when your buddy needs you, praise God. Yeah. David had a bear that came and he killed the bear. Yes, sir. And then sometime later or maybe before, I don't remember, just a sequence, doesn't matter. A lion came. Yep, sir. Probably a mountain lion, I, I would think. Yep. We call them panthers or pumas or cougars or whatever. Yep. It really don't matter. It's a lion. It's got claws on every digit. Every, the front leg, the back leg, it's got claws sticking out everywhere. And big old fangs. Yep. He eats you up with. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That ain't possible. David saw that thing coming, sis. I mean, it looks like a saw blade on wheels. <laughs> it, it, every, 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 everywhere you touch, it's going to cut you. And David didn't run. David stood his ground and killed that thing. Right. Now, somebody said one day, it might have been a sickly lion. I don't care if it was a sickly lion or a healthy lion. He's a lion. He's a lion. And he wasn't a sickly bear. He was a bear, praise God. But David stood and fought. The lion and fought the bear. And then later when David was still just a boy, his daddy called him in one day. And I don't know who was tending the sheep while David was gone, but dad said, look, your brothers have gone out to fight the Philistines and we haven't heard anything. There wasn't any telegraph or telephone or television or telewoman. <laughs> Four major means of communication. <laughs> I'm well, I snuck up on somebody who was there. Somebody's got to look. No, there wasn't any way to hear from the front lines, and David's daddy wanted to know how's it going with the boys. And yeah, so yeah. he sent David over and said, David, just go over and find out what's happening with the boys and come back and let me know. Well, David takes off. All right. His brothers see David coming. And I'm sure that, oh, Lord, here comes trouble. Yeah. Here comes little brother. Yeah. I was hearing about big brother a while ago. Well, this was little brother. Yeah. But they, they are in a bind because the Philistines are on one side of this valley. Yep. And the Israelites are on the other side of the valley. And down in that valley for 40 solid days, there's a huge, huge man. Yep. And he's screaming out. Send me a man, right. and let's fight. Right. Many times in that day, rather than the whole army going out and fighting against their army and causing a bunch of death and a bunch of widows and orphans, they would pick one man. And that one man would go down into that valley and fight. And if the Israelite giant or warrior won, then it was like the whole army of Israel won, rather than everybody getting cut up and, and injured. But if the Philistine giant won, then it was like Israel lost. Everybody got beat by that one guy. Yeah. And that one guy is a guy like you've never seen in your life. He is huge. Yeah. He's, got, he's got a big sword, a big shield, a big spear. Got on all his armor, and he's got an armor bearer going ahead of him, carrying part of his fighting weapons. David looks down into that valley and that giant is screaming out. And David didn't see it as a personal thing. Right, right. He said, wait a minute, we serve a living God. Yes, that giant is making fun of the God that I serve. Right, I'm going to tell you what, David had sat out on that hillside with those sheep and played his little harp and wrote his songs that we read in the book of Psalms yeah. and his prayers. And Brother Joe, he had built a relationship with God. He had a relationship with God. David learned how to throw a stone, but David learned how to praise God better than he could throw a stone, praise God. I mean, you going to tell somebody in this building today, it's a good day to build a relationship with God. It's a good day Over the next year. You never know what's in the 
this valley. You never know what tomorrow is going to bring. But I know a God that knows all the tomorrows. I know a God that owns all the cattle on a thousand hills. I know a God that is able to do it. Able, abundantly above all we ask or even think. Praise God. Just give the Lord a hand praise. Why don't you Jesus name? He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. In Jesus' name. Turn to your neighbor and say, He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. David looked down into that valley, uh-huh. saw that giant, and said, Why have you somebody killed this uncircumcised Philistine? Right, right. He was standing the armies of the living God. I imagine his brothers were saying, David, Daddy needs you. Yeah, go home. Go home. Dad's looking for you. Go tend to the sheep, David. Amen. David said, no, I want to kill that dude. Yeah. Finally, word came to King Saul. There's a man out here who says he'll fight that giant and declares he will kill him. Yeah. Yeah. Saul said, well, bring him to me. And when they brought David in, he's still a lamb of boy. Saul must have did a double take. Where's your daddy at, son? Who's going to fight the giant? David said, I'm going to fight him. Saul talked to him. David said, what you don't know is I killed a bear with my bare hands. I killed a lion with my bare hands. And I don't know, somehow he convinced Saul to let David go out and stand as the champion of Israel. And if David had lost, the whole army would have lost. He somehow convinced Saul to let him go. But Saul said, I tell you what I'll do, son. I'll let you wear my armor. Uh And brothers, y'all, it would be like taking Shaquille O'Neal's coat and putting it on me. (laughs) He wears about a size 60 coat. I'm wearing 48 or 50, but it still would hang off of me on every side. Amen. They put that armor on David, and he couldn't even walk with it on. Right. Right. But the real insult, David turned to Saul and said, I can't wear this stuff. It's never been proven. Right. <laughs> David said, you've never fought a fight with it on. It's not got any scars on it. It's not did it anywhere. You hadn't fought in it. Why would I want to fight it? I thank God we got weapons that are proven. I thank God we've got weapons that work. Praise God. I thank God we're not defenseless in this hour. David said, I can't do it. And Saul said, well, whatever you want, go. And so David goes down. And he goes down by a little brook, I think the name of it was Cherith, yes. and reaches down and picks up five smooth stones and put them in his pocket. Right. You know, we as Pentecostals way over spiritualize a lot of stuff, sister. Yes, we, we put emphasis on things that don't need emphasis. Yes. I heard somebody say one day, well, those five smooth stones stood for J-E-S-U-S, five letters. I said, he didn't know nothing about J-E-S-U-S. Amen. Well, those five smooth stones stand for F-A-I-T-H. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. I can give you a very down-to-earth and simple explanation for why David got five stones rather than just one. Goliath had four brothers. Right. Amen. David said, I'll clean up the whole mess of them. Yeah. I'll get a rock for all the boys, praise yes, God. Sir. I want you to know David come out from the, out of that brook and the giant's out there screaming. And he's, he, he's probably showing his big muscles and whipping that sword around and all of that kind of stuff. And you know what David did? He took off running. Yeah. He ran toward the giant. Now that's probably not going to be taught in any hand-to-hand warfare. Run! But I want David said, I'm not taking time to let you build doubt in my mind. I'm not going to watch you long enough for fear to get a hold of my heart. I know right this moment my God is able. And David took off running toward that giant. The giant said, I'm going to split you open and feed you to the buzzards. And David said, you have come with swords and spears. I've come in the name of the Lord. And when he slung that rock, it hit that giant in the hole. He could hit it right in the forehead. And the giant tottered and fell head first toward that boy. And the boy took his sword and decapitated the giant. David killed God. He is mucho malo, hombre. 
Uh, he's a bad dude. He's a bad hombre. That's all I know. Except adios. <laughs> <laughs> That's the extent of it, right there. If it gets any beyond that, I'm in trouble. Tacos. <laughs> oh, Lord. David. But, but David said, in the day of my trouble. Yeah, yeah. Brother West, I was thinking about this scripture. David, you killed a bear. You killed a lion. You killed a giant. Right. And one day, the Amalekites snuck up and stole... David and these mighty men that were his followers had left for a little while and they came to Ziklag and they burned the city, burned all the houses and stole everybody's wife and everybody's children, everybody's cattle and took them away. The Amalekites robbed David. And everybody was talking about killing David. But right in the middle of everybody talking about stoning him, David said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to talk to him. When everybody's against you, what you going to do? I'm going to talk to him. When everybody's down on you, what you going to do? I'm going to talk to him. They had all wept and cried and moaned and groaned till they couldn't cry no more. And now they're looking for somebody to blame. And they looked at David and said, if we hadn't been with you, our wives would be fine. If we hadn't been following you, our children would be fine. If we hadn't gone along with you, everything would be going good. You don't know that it would have been going good. You surmise that it would have been going good. But you don't know that, praise God. But when people get in a bind, they got to find some place to put blame. Oh yeah. And David was a man. But you know what the Bible said? David encouraged himself in the Lord. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yeah. oh. right. Yes, sir. He did. Brother Joe, sometimes everybody's not going to be on your same thought pattern. That's right. That's right. There's going to be days when nobody's going to be on your side and nobody's going to be in your corner and nobody's going to be on your, on your team. Right. You're going to be the team, you and God. But David said, you know what? Me and God's enough. Me and God can get it done. There's going to be days when everybody's down on you that you're going to need to encourage yourself in the Lord. There's days when I have to just stop and say, Pat Phillips, as a man, you're weak as anybody else. But you've got a relationship with a God that's bigger than anything. You've been forgiven. You've been cleansed. You've been washed. You've been sanctified. You've been justified. You've been baptized in the name of the Lord. You've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you've got to encourage yourself in the Lord, praise yeah. God. you got to yank your own self up by your shoe yeah. drag and say, we're going to get up and go again. Then we're going to get up and fight again. We're going to get up and pray again. We're going to get up and praise again. We're going to get up. Nobody's on my side, but I'm going to praise Him. I'm going to pray, oh my Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Right now, somebody ought to just lift their hands up and say, hey, he's my God. He may not be your God, but he's my God. I've got a relationship with the God of heaven. Uh, you may not like me, but my God loves me. You may not care for me, but my God is on my side. David knew his God. Yes, hallelujah. And David was able with 400 men to go down and conquer the whole Amalekite army and take back their wives and their children. Nobody lost anything. The Bible said David recovered everything. But since he didn't just recover what they lost, he took everything the Amalekites had stolen from everybody else. He got extra praise God. I'm just going to tell you, there's sometimes you just serve God and he'll give you more than you lost, praise God. He'll give you more than you expected. He'll give you more than what you should have got. He'll give you more than your rightful portion, praise God. I, I'm a testimony to that. I can tell you right now, there's a God that can multiply and bless every little thing you've got, everything you've ever given up to serve God. He'll give it back to you in multiplication. Somebody ought to lift their hands and love the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, A man like David, a warrior, an incredible warrior. Yep. Sister Sheila, I, I often wonder, what could be troubling him? Yep. Yep. I, I got to think, Brother Joe, that David's day of trouble might have been on a different scale than my day of trouble. Right. Right. I've never killed a bear. Nope. <laughs> Me 
Lord be willing, one day I'm going to. I've been wanting to go for a number of years. And you may not agree with any of that. That's fine. I didn't ask you to go. Amen. Not being ugly, I'm just saying to tell you. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. Never killed a lion, but if one comes by, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Amen. Not with my bare hands. No. <laughs> nope, not going to do that. No. I hadn't never faced a giant, right. not a physical giant. Nope. I've faced some physical, spiritual giants, and I've faced some health issues that were giants. Yes, sir. But I just got to believe that when David said, my day of trouble. Right. Now, in my mind, I can't imagine what it must have been that was troubling David so bad. Right. When a bear didn't trouble him, and a, and a giant didn't trouble him, and all the Amalekites didn't trouble him, and the, right. and the lion didn't right. trouble him. Right. David, what is troubling you? Right. I don't know what it was, but David said, I do know what to do. Yeah. I, don't, I can't fight it. It's too big. I can't overcome it. But I do know what I'm going to do. In the day of my trouble, I called on the Lord. In the day of my trouble, I invited the Lord's presence into my situation. Right. Right. Amen. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this building right now. My, 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 my. Let, let, me, let me tell you a little story. Let me, let me tell you something. Now, like I told you before, I'm a simple guy. I'm, I'm a natural guy. I, I love nature. Most nature. I don't love poison ivy. I'm not crazy about ticks and chickers. Cactuses, bull nails, you can have all of them. I don't want none of them. A lot of like nature I don't care about. But I love nature. Yes, sir. But Joe, we were pastoring our first church over in Louisiana years ago. Little bitty church down by a river and down the, in, the, in the Louisiana Delta, soybeans and oh, yeah. cotton and stuff all around. And we we doing our best to build a church, teaching Bible studies and going to hospitals and going and sitting on front door, front porches and drinking coffee with old gentlemen, getting to know the community and, and eating their dumplings and chicken and eating their fried chicken. And they, man, they, they would invite us over and it would be a layout, I'm telling you. Just trying to get to know them. But one day, I was just tired. I just was tired. Uh, and down below us, a little way, about a mile, there was a, a place down there. There was, a, there was a reserve there that you couldn't hunt in, but you could fish in. And there was this big hole of water there that I loved to fish in. Had trees hanging over, very shady, very pretty, full of fish. And the manager there told me anytime I want to just park. You know, I said, I can't let you drive in, but just park at the gate and walk in. Nobody's going to bother you. I told my wife, I said, you know, babe, I just, I need to, I need to get away a little bit. Yeah. I'm going fishing. So here I go. And it's, it's up kind of in the middle of the day, wrong time to go fishing, but I really wasn't wanting to fish in. I just wanted to go down there and hang out. Yeah. And I get down there and, and between the water and the weeds, there was a space of about four feet there that the water was a little low and it had, it, 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 it had left that open area. But it's real thick over here. And, and that part of the country got a lot of old cotton mouths and oh, yeah. got alligators and yeah. got stuff that you don't want to run up on when you're not prepared. Yeah. Yes, sir. And so I'm easing along and every once in a while I cast out in the water and kind of halfway fishing and halfway just getting my mind loose. Right. Oh, it was a beautiful day. Gorgeous, sunny day. A little wind blowing. Wasn't real hot. And, and I'm down there and I'm just easing along. And all of a sudden, over to the right, in those weeds, there's a commotion. And I'm thinking, what in the world is this? And I hear it and I see the tops of the grass moving. And I knew something's coming. Yeah. So I kind of backed up a little bit, give it some room, because it looked like it was headed for the pond. Yeah. But Joe, in a minute, there was a little green frog. <laughs> and brother, he was in a hurry. Yeah. He was double timing it. <laughs> My brother knows what double time is. He yeah. knows what marking time is. Yeah. That frog wasn't marking time. Marking time means you're moving your feet, but you're not going anywhere. Yeah, going yeah. That frog was double, maybe triple timing. I mean, he was moving, and right behind him comes a little snake. 
I'm, and he's right on that frog's trail. I mean, him and that frog is in a race for the water. I don't know if the frog thought he could outswim the snake when he got in the water, but that's what he saw as safety. He's headed for that pond. And I'm telling you, I, I'm not dramatizing this. I don't need to. The, the real story is good enough. One jump short of that pond, that snake caught two toes on that frog's foot. Oh, no. Just two toes. Wasn't a big bite. It was a little bite. And I, I like I say, I... I, I, I go out in the woods a lot, I immediately recognize the snake's not poisonous. Yeah. So I wasn't that worried. I eased up a little bit closer and I'm watching what's going on. And he caught that frog by two toes. And that frog is lunging and jerking and trying to... And, and, I, and I didn't think it that day, but today I thought, all of a sudden that beautiful day, they are all of a sudden, that gorgeous sunny day with a little breeze blowing has got the capability of ending that frog's days. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. His dreams, his hopes, whatever they might be in frog world, <laughs> were in danger of being totally consumed. Right. And that little dude has got two toes on his back foot. Uh. And in my mind, I thought, that won't be enough. Two toes. Uh. That's, that's kind of a small little insignificant thing. Yep. I'm going to tell you something. Trouble don't have to get a big bite on you. No, no, no. And you don't have to go looking for trouble. That frog wasn't looking for trouble. He didn't go out by that snake and tease him. He's just going about his everyday business eating bugs and enjoying life. And all of a sudden, here comes the snake. I, trouble will come looking for you someday. Right. Trouble will come to your home someday. Yeah. Trouble will appear on the horizon when you're not looking. Well, you don't have to be looking for trouble to get in trouble. Amen. Wrong place, wrong time. Yeah, and all of a sudden, I watched. And I, I know you don't paint moving pictures. Nope. But if you can paint a moving picture, yeah. that snake has two toes and those jaws start doing this. And he slowly begins to swallow that frog's foot. And he's pulling that frog back away from the pond. Uh, jerking him. Jer frog's getting a hold of grass and weeds and little, little stacklings there and trying to hold on. And that snake would reach back with his tail and wrap it around a little bush and jerk that frog back away. He's got him three or four feet now back away from that pond. And those jaws, that, the, uh, now, I'm not particularly crazy about frogs, but I hate snakes. And I knew that snake wasn't dangerous to me. The frog or snake, neither one knew I was there. They had no idea there's something here many times bigger than both of us together. I had made a sound. I'm just fighting. And I thought about jumping in the middle of this thing because I just didn't want the, the snake eat him. Right. <laughs> I don't want to take him home with me. I just didn't want to see him get ate this particular day. Amen. Another day maybe when I'm not here, but not today. <laughs> and I'm telling you, the Lord said, wait, 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 just a minute. Wait a minute. Brother, it was just like he was standing right there beside me. He said, hang on and watch. Watch what happens. Yeah. And those jaws. But the next the next thing I know, he's got the whole foot. Uh -huh. He just keeps getting a little... Sin don't have to get a big bite on you. No, People sometimes say, well, it's not a big deal. Yep. Big deals can get to be... Little deals can get to be big deals real quick. Real quick. Uh -huh. We're talking seconds of time. Yep. This frog has now got one whole foot in that snake's mouth and those jaws are working and he's pulling backwards. And all of a sudden this day has become a bad day. And then and the frog realizes that this is not good. This is not going to turn out good. There are no friendly snakes. All right, exactly. They all will eat you if you're a frog. Yeah, exactly. they, they're not going to slide up beside you and say, Hey, old buddy, old pal, old chum. They're going to slide up beside you and say, You look good. <laughs> and he is chewing. Uh -huh. The next thing I, I know, I look, and that frog 
has got one leg up to the knee in that snake's mouth. But Joey's consuming more and more and more all the time. A little bit of time. A little bit of time. And pulling. Yep. And, and, and I'm fascinated. I'm watching this whole And the next thing I know, that frog is still jerking and pulling and trying to get away. Just trying to get a hold of something. But the snake has got it and the jaws are working. And the next thing I know, it's all the way up to his body. Right. That frog has got one leg totally in that snake's mouth. And you know what happened? He quit. Sister West, he quit. The frog just quit. He stretched those front legs out. He stretched that other back leg out. His eyes glazed over. And he checked out. And something down inside of me said, wait a minute. You still got life. You still got dreams. He's got one leg, but that you still got three more. But the frog quit. He gave up on life. Because he had struggled and tried, but he had not had any success. And so now he's just given up. Called it off. But Joe, in the last 46 and a half years, I've seen a lot of people yes, sir. that the day of trouble caught them unaware. I have to. I've seen little things get to be big things, and then they just quit. Yep. Yep. They just walk out the door and quit. Yep. Give up on their dreams, give up on their hopes, give up on their future, give up on everything. Just walk out the door and quit on God. Right, right. Now, I realize that the mind can only stand so much. The heart can only handle so much. Yes, sir. Years of years of negativity can, can mount up. Right. There's a lot of things that can happen. But I'm telling somebody in this building today, don't ever, ever, ever give up. Don't quit on God. That frog didn't know I was there. That snake did not. That snake thought this is going to be lunch in just a few seconds. He's got that that, that frog pulled away from that pond. He's got one whole leg in his mouth. He's already finishing this thing in his mind. And all of a sudden, Brother Joe, down in the heart of that frog, something kicked in. Yeah. Yeah. Down in the heart of that little green fella, something said, wait, I, I'm not ready to quit yet. I'm not ready to give it up yet. Right. I'm not ready to count it as lost yet. And he began to croak and he began to jump. And I jumped right in the middle of it and gave that snake a stomping like he ain't never had. <laughs> <laughs> that frog went in the pond and that snake hobbled, if you're a snake and hobble, he hobbled all out through the bushes. I didn't chase him out in the bushes, but I stomped him from one end to the other, and he let the frog go, and the frog took off. He didn't even say it. Thank you. But I could not stand it when he cried out. When he opened his mouth and said, I'm not ready to quit. I'm not ready to give up. I'm not ready to lose it all over two toes. I'm not ready to let my life be gone. Somebody in this building needs to hear me right now. The Lord spoke to me and said, it's not time to quit. It's not time to give up. It's not time to walk away. It's time to lift up your voice and call on the God who's big enough to settle all of your problems. Somebody needs to lift your hand and love the Oh, my Lord of heaven, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. You don't, don't allow the discouragers to get you down. David could allow those guys to get him down, and he might have died that day. If he'd allowed them to get it, he, he said, look. 
Guys, I don't know but what they've been doing. That's talk to the Lord. He was the only one talking to the Lord, Brother Joe. You know what? The devil has lied to the church and told the church, if you can get everybody to agree on the same thing, then you can get your prayers answered. I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to be a lot of hours in your life when everybody won't agree. There's going to be days when you can't get 100% participation. Just go ahead and pray anyway. There's going to be hours when you're going to be locked up with people around you that don't believe in you. Paul and Silas got locked up in a jail one night with a bunch of murderers and rapists and everything else. And at midnight, the Bible said, they lifted up their voice and began to call on God. They began to praise God. And the doors swung open and the walls fell down. And the chains broke up. Somebody needs to hear me. It's not time. I called on the Lord and he heard me. I called on the Lord and he delivered me. I called on the Lord and he had, oh my Lord Jesus, the Lord said, here in Psalm, if you call on me, I will deliver you. If you call on me, I will intervene. If you call on me, I'll step into the fight with you. If you call on me, I will not leave you alone. I will come. And I will be the difference maker in your life. If you don't ever learn anything else, you learn this. When David, that mighty warrior, that giant killer, that lion slayer, that, that bear killer, when he got into trouble, he said, I'm not going to be ashamed to call on him. It's not going to embarrass me to have to call on him. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be discouraged to call on him. I'm just going to say, Lord, I've had enough. Lord, I've had all I can handle. Lord, I've gone all the way I can. And see God's glory come into your situation. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, the devil ain't like it this done. Come on. The devil's in the phone booth dialing 911. Yeah. It's like trouble on the home front. I'm telling somebody in this building, I don't care what hell said. I don't care what hell did. I don't care what the devil declared. I've got a God that has declared that if you call my name, I will hear you. The name of the Lord is a strong power. The righteous run a ferry and are delivery. Praise God. I gotta tell somebody, Jesus said, call upon me. I'll show you things you never dreamed you'd see. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm gonna close in just a second. John, the youngest of the disciples. Disciple John, who later became the apostle John. Youngest. Just a lad of a boy when he's with Peter and James and he, he's walking along with them and he, he saw a lot of things a lot of people didn't see. He lived longer than all the other apostles. Right. In 96 AD, John wrote the book of Revelation. What it don't tell us, what John didn't record and what history did record was that John was still a pastor. Right. And they came to him and said, look, you will not preach in that name anymore. Right. You will not declare the name of Jesus anymore. Right. You will not baptize in the name of Jesus anymore. Right. You will not do it. And John said, I will. I'm not changing. I'm not, I'm not going to give it up. And then they, so they took John and they beat him. They beat him terribly. And John's an old man now. He's not a young guy. He, you know, he's got an old body. And they beat him and they said, now it's going to get worse if you don't quit. And John said, I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm not quitting. I'm just going to lay it right out front for you. I'm not giving up. And history says they poured boiling oil on John. Yes, sir. They poured boiling oil on John. Some of you women have had oil spatter on you. You know how bad it is. But to get it poured on your body. They expected John to die, but he didn't die. That old man was still alive, praise God. And they said, well, what are we going to do with him now? We beat him and he didn't die. We poured oil him and he didn't die. They put him in a boat and rolled him out to a little island called Patmos and put him out on the Isle of Patmos.
Christmas. It was a little small island offshore. And it was where you carried those that were very sick and dying and you didn't have a cure for it. And you didn't want somebody else to get sick. You'd carry them there and let them die. It was where they carried political prisoners and put them there. Nothing to eat. If you want to eat that body over there that's decomposed, then go ahead. But it's going to kill you. Nothing but dry bones. Nothing but skeleton. Nothing but stinking corpses. All around, they throw John out yeah. and left him for yes, dead. Sir. Yes, sir. But you know what, brother? John had a little bit of him. Yeah. What David had in him. Yes, because John wrote that on the Lord's day, yes, I got in the spirit. Yes, John, how in the world did you do it? You've been beat up. You've been poured all on you. You've been thrown out with nothing but stinking bodies and corpses and, and bones laying around. How in the world? He said, I closed my mind to everything. I closed my mind to the smell. I closed my mind to the sight. I just lifted up my eyes unto the Lord from which cometh my help. John said, I got in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Some of y'all need to learn how to get in the Spirit when there's nothing good around you, when there's nothing fresh around you, when everything around you is dying dead. You need to learn how to lift your eyes up and say, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. I will praise you in the morning. I will praise you in the evening. I will praise you all day long. Praise God. All right. All right. Come on. Good. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a voice behind me sound like the voice of rushing wind or mighty waters. It said, come up here, John. I got some things to show you. I got some things to tell you. And you know what? Abraham, the father of the faithful, all the days he followed God. The Bible said he looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. But Brother Joe, he never saw that city. He never found it. But you know what? John saw it. John walked through it. Yes. John saw the gates. John saw yes. the walls. Yes. John saw yes. the streets. John saw the mansion. John, oh my Lord, John, how did it happen? I learned how to praise God. I called on him in the day of my trouble. And God prevailed. Oh, somebody, somebody needs to get a hold of this. Somebody needs to get a hold of this. I called on him. I wasn't embarrassed. I wasn't ashamed. I called on the Lord. In the day of my trouble. Hallelujah. I called on the Lord and he heard me. I called on the Lord and he delivered me. He said, John, I got things I want you to write. I want you to write to the church at Pergamos. I want you to write to the church at Thyatira. I want you to write to the church at Philadelphia. I want you to write to the Laodiceans. John, you got letters to write. You got sermons to preach. Life's not over with yet. You may feel like you're being swallowed up. You may feel like something's eating you alive. But I'm telling you now, if you learn how to praise God, if you learn how to worship God, if you learn how to run to an altar and say, look, I had not sinned, but something's eating me up. I had not sinned, but trouble has come to my home. We need, we need, as a church, we need to be more sensitive. Because somebody runs to this altar and falls on their face crying, that don't mean they've sinned. It means something's troubling them. Something's got a hold of them and they don't like what the implications are. Something's chewing on them and they don't like, they can't sleep at night. They get, they're all time negative. They're all time feeling bad. They're all time hurting everywhere. All time down. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not ready to give up. I'm crying out to the Lord. We need to be sensitive and learn how to tell. Is that person yes, seeking sir. God for yes, sin? Sir. Or are they seeking God for deliverance? And if they're seeking yes, God yes, for yes. deliverance, I'm not going to let them be there by themselves. Right. I'm going to begin to pray yes. with them. Right. I'm going to begin right. to call on God with them. Right. I'm going to begin to help them get into the Spirit on the Lord's day. Praise God. Let's stand all over this building. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm just going to tell you now. I've been around 46 years more now. I've been blessed. I've been, I've, I've preached camp meetings. I've preached revivals. I've, I've pastored. I've, I've been blessed. Yes. I've seen healings. I've seen miracles. I've, right. I've seen all kinds of incredible things. But Brother Joe, there's been days in my life when I felt as alone as I've ever felt in my life. Right. When right. I felt like there wasn't a friend anywhere near. When I felt right. like nobody's on my side. There have been times when I was so lonely and so lonesome I felt like, and the devil said, just throw it in. Just, just give it up. I'm not giving it up. I'm not. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I don't know how God's going to give me victory over this. I don't know how I'm going to defeat this giant. I don't know how I'm going to beat this bear. I don't know how I'm going to handle this, but I know this. I'm not going to die easy. The devil may consume me, but he'll have to fight to do it. He's going to have to fight over my hand clapping. He's going to have to fight over my hands being raised. He's going to have to fight over my voice crying out in the name of the Lord. Somebody in this building needs to quit giving up. You need to quit giving up. You need to quit giving up. Don't ever become a good quitter. Become a great comeback. I'm going to be a comeback. I'm going to come back and serve God. I'm going to come back and praise God. Things might not have gone the way I wanted, but I'm not giving up on God. No way. No way. I want everybody in the building to come around the front.